I am going to put my seat belt on. I've never worn a seat belt the tractor in my life. But uh, seems like a good day to start. Yeah. I don't know how this works. Oh, it's an air pump. Okay. All right. Okay. Little air ride. Uh, I gotta set it to Huscular. Right there. That's the spot. I think that's it there, buddy. Well, let's go to Camp Beaumont. Can't beat this, man. There's nothing better than maple season. So let me show you what I got here. Austin wants this loaded full of water, taken down to Camp Beaumont, so he has wash water. And I'm gonna use these forks, take the LS tractor down, and uh, we're gonna take that, uh, we're gonna use the forks to take the uh, GVS 300A, the Atlas Copco vacuum pump, the new one. My dad just wired up the drive. And we're gonna take that down to Beaumont as well. So we're gonna leave this tote in the back of my truck. I did put, one of the best things I did was put springs, extra springs, in the back of my half ton pickup. So it's really like a three quarter full ton. Um, probably shouldn't load that up like that, but uh, we're gonna, we're gonna. I know I got the uh, springs for it, but that tow to water at 8.3 pounds per gallon and 275 gallons, that's a lot of water, that's a lot of weight. So be about 3,000 pounds in the back of this pickup. You know what, maybe we should do that in old Gertie. Now that I think about it, I don't think this pickup's going to take 3,000 pounds. I don't think it's a good idea. So, let's go. So, just got back yesterday from Quebec, Vermont trip. Um, Ralph and I did a marathon run. And stayed at my parents last night. Uh, working with Austin a little bit this morning. My dad, I think we have a solution for that new woods tank uh, through the monitoring system. Worked with Corey at CEDL to automate the valve down in the ravine where the siphon the siphon line that transfers from down below we use vacuum to suck it up and send it down to the uh, two horsepower uh, electric releaser before it pumps up into these tanks so i'm coming to check these tanks i think austin's got it going over to the poly tank right now because we are uh we're full I actually want to make sure our sap tank shed is not, uh, you know, bowing because there's a lot of weight in there. So we're hoping these I beams are holding up, but uh, I think everything's good. But I'm gonna check it out, and uh, then we're gonna head to the factory. Then we're gonna, sorry, we're gonna head to the sugar works. Call it the factory, just out of habit. So we're gonna head to the sugar works, and um, I'm gonna take that LS tractor. Camp Beaumont. Camp Beaumont is halfway between the farm and the sure works. So it uh, gives me an excuse to use the tractor. We're going to move the um, vacuum pump down to the pump house at Camp Beaumont and uh, get Austin some water so he can wash tanks and stuff. It's, it's kind of something he's been asking for. But uh, yeah, Austin's been kicking butt, man. Really impressed with him and what he's got going on. Good job, Austin. And if Austin's grandmother's watching, you guys did a good job with that one. You guys did a good job raising that one. So, so let's uh, let's go check the sap tanks, see how they look. I also ordered up from a friend of mine. He's got some pine. Uh, so Tyler's here in town, and, and Rock Creek's got his own sawmill. And I just told him I'm out of pine logs. I can't. I need to finish the siding. I got nothing. Can you help me out? I need about 100 square feet of pine. So uh, Tyler's going to help me out, and I uh, really appreciate that. Thanks, Tyler. So. Let's take a look. So Austin's currently using the sawmill shed here for our auxiliary sap tank. That tells you from last night to today, you can see it's pumping in right now. I need to wipe the outside of this off so it looks a little better. Um, I like poly tanks that are perfectly white. I can assure you it's clean on the inside, but in moving it over here, Austin had to do this himself. You could tell he just kind of pushed it along the ground, got a little sawdust on there. But having this under cover is nice because now we don't have to worry about snow and, you know, this is, the sawmill shed's actually working out pretty good for an auxiliary sap tank shed. So let's go look at what's going on in these sap tanks here. 
Um, actually, let's take a look. I was kind of curious. Ow. I don't see anything bowing. Looks pretty good to me. So, a lot of weight on the on these uh, I-beams for sure. So, let's take a look. Oh, he could have left more in here. There's still about a thousand gallons of storage here. Um, for sure. I think Austin just playing it safe. Just playing it safe. I don't blame him. But, uh, yeah, it's looking good in here, isn't it? We can get uh, two more lights from our friends at Nizen. But he just manually connects this piece here. It's not glued. And then that sap, there's sap in this line, will transfer from the releaser down in the pump house up and over into the poly tanks. So, yeah, this is uh, it's actually an upgrade, guys. This is, uh, you know, this isn't the Rube Goldberg operation it used to be. We're moving up. Maple Farmers, night. One thing real quick, I forgot to explain how these sap tanks are connected. Um, we run them as one tank. So the sap will fill here. We have one level sensor. We're gonna actually put another CDL level sensor here just so we know sometimes this valve down here will get closed when Bill comes and hauls. And we don't really know. We assume that they're running as one tank. So there's 2,000 gallons here, 2,000 gallons here, and there's no valve over here. So what'll happen is, is when this tank fills, as it's filling up this way, they'll equalize. The pressure will push down and it'll run into this other tank and they'll be about the same level. Now, if it's really running in, this tank will usually be higher than this one. So you can get to the point where you still got a little bit of freeboard on this tank, but it'll actually start overflowing on this side. Plus I can also tell the building's kind of tipping this way a little bit. I can just kind of feel it. There's a little bit more, uh, I don't know, it's not quite, eh, maybe a little bit that way. So maybe if Austin puts more sap in this tank, it'll level it back out. But yeah, we're definitely getting sap in here in the poly tank. But I just, I did want to explain how we can use uh, two tanks as one. So if you get a bad, big sap run, um, that gives you the ability to maybe think a little bit different, be creative, give yourself some flexibility. So. Let's go to the sugar works. It's maple season. Okay, I need to take the snow pusher off the LS tractor. Throw some boots in here. Austin and I are gonna get some water and a vacuum pump down to Camp Beaumont. And uh, I think we're just gonna use the flatbed over there. Makes sense, we got it. We're gonna put the tote and the, you know, $15,000 vacuum pump, strap it down, and just take Gertrude down there. I think it's safer than running down the road with this big monster and a $15,000, you know, vacuum pump on forks. Uh, really, I don't trust the pallet, to be honest with you. <laughs>
We got sap coming in. Let's go see it. How's it going? Good. Yeah, baby. First load of sap. Maple season's beginning. Thank you. So I gotta get cold water. Throw it on the tote here for Austin. Ralph and I were talking about just parking the tractor in here. And, uh, you know, I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna because I can. And things last longer when they're inside. I really don't feel like, you know, wearing a $50,000 tractor out in the sun. Like, you know. And it'll stay cleaner longer, that's for sure. So let's get some water in here. So dad's been busy putting drives on vacuum pumps for us and we even have some more showing up today. Let me uh, flip the light on here. Let me turn it around. So here's a GVS, no, this is the GVS 300. This is sold. This is a DZS 150 claw pump. And then this guy is a brand spanking new GVS 300A that uh, dad just wired up this 15 horse drive. And uh, yeah, this baby will pull 200 CFM. And this is going to go down the Boy Scout camp. So what Fred did was he ended up selling the we had three GV, uh, three DZS um, 150, so the Atlas Copco claw pumps, the 108 CFM units. We had three of them at the Boy Scout camp, Camp Beaumont. And what Fred did was he ended up selling the two two of the used ones for you know farmers that needed vacuum pumps. We can get this unit, so we ordered it. This pump will replace two. We prefer claw pumps over the oil you know, the oil va rotary va or whatever they're called. And we'll see, this is the first time I've ever run one of these units. So we'll get it loaded up and out to camp and then Austin and I'll get it set into place. That's the plan anyways. It's easy as that. It's gotta go fast. It's a motto around here. Gotta go fast.
bottle Gertrude. We know we'd end up having some things to do, but I'll take you down underneath and show you. We, uh, it came with these designer uh, wood pallet spacers. The problem is, is these actually aren't spacing this high enough for the drive shaft. So we need to put a spacer right here because this is where the drive shaft is touching the lift mechanism, the hydraulics. So there is no space. But the problem is, is these designer spacers that's made of old pallet wood isn't giving it enough gap. Um, so Austin's gonna get me some more, uh, we're gonna go two inch white oak, give that a little bit bigger span. And then we're gonna have to put spacers down here too because you don't want, that's the official term. We knew we bought this thing and need some work, but uh, I'm going to throw uh, the vacuum pump and the tote of water for washing tanks up on old Gertie here. Picked it up. It even tilts it back. You drive a stick shift? Yeah. Oh, good. I gotta put some uh, oak barrels in the back of my truck that are going to Chicago tomorrow. Benny and I are heading to Goose Island. Meet with those folks. And uh, so I am gonna quickly put those in the back of this and then uh, in the back of my pickup. I'm gonna put the barrels, I have, I'm operating on two hours sleep, folks. So, sorry. But I am going to put the pallet with the four oak barrels. I got two bourbons and two uh, rye whiskeys that we're gonna take. We're gonna let them try it for some different beers. If there's anyone that knows how to use a barrel for beer, it's Goose Island, so. All right, let's have some fun. It's a little uh, overkill for a forklift. Get some 
the lights on. What do you think? Lights, lights. Light this baby up like a Christmas tree. A little natural light for me here. I think I'm excited about this tractor. I'm going right down Main Street, folks. Yeah, baby. I think I'm gonna hit a green light. Yeah, baby. There's nobody that gets to do this on YouTube. Like, there's nobody gets to do this in their, like, this is the greatest job in the world. I have the greatest job in the world. And that's why I'm here to share it with you folks. I get to do some really cool things. The hardest thing is making sure that I spend time with my family. Because it's fun, and you get sucked in, and you know your kids need you. I'm going to let this guy pass me. Cue some Dan Bainey. Raised up on a piece of ground south of 90. One stoplight northern down is where you'll find me. Head and away from the city life. Bound to see my countryside just south of 90. And the corn's never grown so high. South of 90. Smell a wood stove burning for miles right behind me. Sunday supper's ready to eat. Hey, all my kinfolk take a seat. We say great. We thank God for our friends and family. Roof over our head from the clothes to the shoes on our feet. May not be much, but it's a slice of heaven. And we got it all with our gallus hands. Another day in the promised land, just south of 90. We're out here at the pump house at Camp Beaumont. And this is where we run our vacuum pumps. So we're going to put this GVS. 300A over here. We got the uh, DZS 150 here. Austin's hooking up, solidifying the where the drive's going. This is our releaser and power source. And now we know we actually have some control options with those um, CDL. The model is an SC 200 which is the I.O. so you can turn things on or off, which is kind of nice. Okay. You happy? Yeah. You know what we should have done? Huh. Made sure that the wire would reach the control, the uh, panel. Oh, you dirty dog. What about that little one? Oh, mm -hmm. it's for the big panel over there. Uh. Actually, no, come to think of it, I bet they were, I think they were wired into this. Nah, that's good. probably going to work. We're good. I'm Heck sure yeah, that's, Just, that's why they make stress relief. It's only one. <laughs> yeah, you're just going to like keep pushing it because there's just no meat. Oh, there wasn't a hole here. Oh. I'm making up my own. That's kind of why I want it here because this one doesn't catch very much. Cool. There. Which Leatherman is that? Do you know the model on that? Yeah, it's a, I love this thing. It's a free P2. Why, you like it? Free P2. Uh, I need you to want get one of these? One. I need to get one. I like this one. Um, I really do. This one's been with me like four or five years. Oh, well, Bethy and I got ours at the same time. So this is four, four years okay. old. Okay. I need one to take to Alaska. I had a Gerber I liked okay, and I messed it up or lost it or something. So now I'm asking around everybody that carries one on the normal every day what they use. I feel naked without without my Leatherman. What I really want is Leatherman oh, used yeah. to have a make your own. So you guys run this without this? No, but in the off season we leave it off so that every time you walk back here you just turn it and make sure it stays free. Got gotcha. you. You got the heavy end now. Just sliding it back. Ready? One, two, three. 
baby sucks. It's known in the pouch so high south of 90 Get you a truck or get you a stuff kind of country Drifting up about two lanes wide while boys working overtime, stacking it all up. And we thank the good Lord for friends and family. Roof over our heads from the clothes to the shoes on our feet. May not be much, but it's a slice of heaven. And we built it all with our callous hands For the bit in the promised land Just south of that Strong and it ain't no lie. Drive the left till the day we die. Just south the night day. Raised up on a piece of ground just south the night day. A one-stop light northern town in this great country. 